Welcome back to On the Edge. I'm Patrick Henningsen, your host, and I'm here today with Charlie Skelton, who's been the Guardian's correspondent for the Bilderberg meetings for the last three years. And this is a very rare mantle to have as a journalist because, frankly, no one's been covering it. So we're hoping that uh, some of what we're talking about today and some of the people we're talking about are going to help open and shed light on what is a shadowy cabal representing a shadowy uh, group of people meeting in secret with the lights mm. out, so to speak. Well, pri let's call it private, yeah. not secret. It's a private meeting, yeah. yeah. It's a private meeting for members only. Yeah. So I think Chatham House Rules. Yeah, Chatham House Rules, um, Surrey Golf Club, et cetera. <laughs> Let, we've got some text in from some of our viewers, and uh, some interesting points. Some, most of them are, are directed at you, Charlie. Um, Greg from Edinburgh has texted in. He said, uh, I wish more mainstream media employees would come forward and talk about the Bilderberg Group. <laughs> How do you feel about that as a, uh, as a mainstream media guy? Right, so that's, that's, that's all I'm about, what he just said there, because I, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm, a, I, I'm so far from being a proper journalist, it's, yeah. it's, it's not even real. You I'm just, you, you've got to be writing jokes for I'm Jimmy writing, Carr. I should be writing yeah. bad jokes, <laughs> exactly. Jimmy Carr, you, you, can't, you can't be covering Bilderberg. Yeah, no, I genuinely shouldn't be. And it's, no. it's, 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 Robert, I where's Robert Fisk? Where yeah. is uh, where are all our Pulitzer Prize uh, um, laureates and? But I sort of regard myself as a, as, a, as a as a shame on all journalism. The fact that I'm news news journalist and the fact that I'm there. And as soon as the BBC and CNN and the Times and the Telegraph and uh, you know the the. the Washington Post, as soon as they start sending people and, and setting up a, a, a press tent, and it, I'm going to back off because, it's, you know, I, I've got nothing to be doing there. But, I'm, but what's interesting about, uh, um, about that is this huge news vacuum that's filled by alternative media. Mm -hmm. And over the last three years, I've seen it absolutely explode from, a, from barely a dozen people in 2009 through a kind of press office that I helped run in... Um, 2010, the press office got bigger, and you know, when I say press office, a kind of hub of uh, uh, alternative media, uh, sharing content, sharing data, networking. sharing networking, yeah. and yeah, the work basically that... doing the job of, of the of the mainstream press. Yeah, I mean, it's it's unbelievable they have to be doing that. But between you and Alex Jones, um, I mean, I think you probably reached uh, millions of people in the last three years, and you've you've helped start the, you know, jump start the sort of Bilderberg coverage, really. And now, the, some of the mainstream media cannot ignore it. You know, and uh, the U.S., a lot of the major um, newspapers, at least, have to at least acknowledge its existence. Yeah. And Marco Rubio, who is the, uh, potentially the favored vice presidential running mate for uh, GOP nominee Mitt Romney, uh, or de, de facto nominee at this point, um, Marco Rubio was uh, apparently being talked about it at, at, um, by the Bilderbergers right. as as uh, Romney's running mate. So um, they just just give people an idea. They yeah. they they kind of choose, you know, who is going to be in the steering positions yeah. in, in, in the years to come. But let me just get to uh, queue up 109. Let's talk about the Young Turks because okay. we talked about that before. The old guard of Bilderberg. Now, the, uh, is, you know, the David Rockefellers, these are the, uh, the aging, decrepit, dark crystal creatures like Henry Kissinger. <laughs> now we're getting into the, the sexy new media, Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Napster. Right there on the, uh, uh, the top um, left-hand corner, I think that's Sean Parker from Napster. Um, now, he's, uh, he, he's also the, you know, the first president of Facebook. If you saw the, the movie The Social Network, he was played by Justin Timberlake. He's going to be a Bilderberg. He was recruited by the CIA when he was at 16 years old. When really? he won the Virginia, he went to Chantilly High School in Virginia, which is a coincidence, and he won the Science Award. Now, you've got Peter Thiel down at the bottom there, one of those three faces. Peter Thiel, yeah. Clarion Capital, they bankrolled Facebook, PayPal. Yeah. This guy uh, is... He's fascinating. He's, he's my favorite of the new guard yeah. by a long way. And, and was he there last year? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's on the steer. He's now been promoted. He's, his career has gone up. He's, he's now on the steering group. Okay, of, so, of he's, he, so he's really in. He's in the. He, he's got a seat at the at the. Yeah, round he's got table. a seat at the table. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I kind of like him in a weird way. He's he, he's a strange character. He's, he calls himself a libertarian. He's into that whole thing of um, uh, see, see, I'm going to call it. He's, he's got a company called something like Seascape, it's something, if you look him up you can see, where they're trying to create offshore sovereign entities. Okay. So he's an uh, interesting guy. Okay, yeah, well, you know, the, the, this is the thing with the, uh, 
What my brother, who's uh, a social networking entrepreneur in America, he calls them the, uh, the, the revenge of the nerds. Yeah. So you have these buffoons from Harvard, computer science graduates, who came through, have come through the, uh, the economic turnstiles and now come out in, in real positions of, yeah. of influence and control. Yeah. You know, they're, they're presiding over um, Facebook, which by all accounts, on a virtual level, it's a sovereign uh, country. It's got a population, it's got its own currency, it's got its own markets, um, it's yeah. got a social network, um, divided, subdivided, yeah. sub-subdivided. Um, well, they were all, I mean, last year you can just have, you can look at, you know, LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman is there, uh, Amazon, you've got Chris Hughes, Facebook, you've got, you know, Craig Mundy who said uh, Microsoft, Eric Schmidt, Google, They're, all the big names are there, and also the head of the NSA, and you, you, mm. you get a sense and, uh, that they're, you know, they're, they're worried about openness, information, mm. there's so much oh, data at the moment, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a, a wild the, the stallion at the, the moment. They're trying to the free keep, a, keep a noose around. Yeah, they're they're scared. They're scared to death. I mean, yeah. Google's seed funded by uh, NSA and CIA shell companies. So from the get go, um, people aren't aware that Google um, was uh, ha has hands and is is mm. is occupied and controlled in some key positions on the board and in management by members. Uh, of, of the government essentially and and the funding is coming from those agencies well all google maps and stuff it's all just american military satellites and yeah, cia whatever you know so it's just commercialized retail nsa technology yeah, yeah. okay well the q, um queue up uh, 108 because just just to stay topical here this is a big big thing this year for bilderberg um greece greece is at the center of the uh european union um, recession, you talked about the haircut before, the collapse of the euro. What's, what the Bilderbergers are frightened of, and this is what I've read um, through our coverage at Infowars, this fantastic article by Paul Joseph Watson. If you want to know about Bilderberg, go to Infowars.com because we've got, you know, volumes of information. But they're scared to death about Greece mounting an economic comeback if they opt out of the euro. Let's say they go back to the drachma. You know, getting out, once Greece gets out of the euro straitjacket and Greece gets back to what it knows best, which is uh, tourism, olive oil, feta cheese, and smashing plates, that they're going to have this massive resurgence. And then Spain's gonna look and say, well, wait a minute, why are we signing up to 100 years of austerity and getting ourselves strapped down into permanent debt and Italy and Portugal and Ireland, when the technocrats have now been placed, unelected technocrats yeah. in heads of state positions, which has worked, which has worked really well in Italy for them. I mean, they've yeah. got Mario Monti, who's three-card Monti. Yeah, yeah. You know, Bilderberg steering committee, now the unelected, you know, PM of Italy. Uh, when he, I felt like his appointment was very much them coming out of the shadows. Bil it was like yeah, oh, Bilderberg. It Monti's was, appointment. Yeah. yeah. It was like, okay, here we are. We're just going to do this thing now. Here come the technocrats, and it was Greece. Because the, the, the euro is very, very important for the Bilderbergers because uh, I think it was um, uh, Davignon, who was a former Bilderberg head, he bragged about how they hatched the idea of the single currency yeah. in 1991, and obviously that was signed into, into action at the Maastricht Treaty in 1999, but he said this was a Bilderberg, yeah. um, a successful Bilderberg project, so it came out of our, our meetings and our steering yeah. committee, and the euro is the template for... Uh, a global government, they, want, they, they would like to roll that out, the central banks, to have an African single yeah. currency, to have a South American single currency, to have a North American single currency, and an Asian single currency, or a Pacific mm. single well, currency. Well, Europe is their baby. I mean, the history but of Bilderberg is the history of Europe. It is, and it's, yeah. And it's, you, can, you can watch it, and I go, I, right from the very beginning, you've got, in nine, and this is, I'll just, look, you know, grab some notes uh, from earlier, which is, if you want to look at the history of Bilderberg, look at a guy called Joseph Rettinger, and he, he starts, he, he, he works for the British intelligence in the war. Then he, in 1946, he addresses Chatham House with a, uh, a he says, I, I want a new effort in the direction of the unity of Europe. Then the CIA come in, mm -hmm. uh, the CIA and the British intelligence, and he's there and he's going out. Then he goes out to America. He meets the Rockefellers, Nelson and David, J.P. Morgan. Uh, the bankers come in, Dulles. And you can see this thing gets mm, built, brothers, built together the Harrymans, like yeah. this, and then they start going, okay, and, and this, this kind of, uh, you know, political financial intelligence entity uh, starts building, 
Europe, you know, mm -hmm. as, as their, as their th you know, some, some academics of the, uh, of the left, of the British left say, you know, this is essentially the CIA building a kind of um, block against communism and going, we need a big old thing to sit here between, uh, literally between us and the communists, you know, whether or not that's exactly what it is, but you know, that's, it, it's, you, you can watch it right from 1946 through to, to now. And yeah, absolutely. I think Greece is a is a is a big crisis for them. Financial intelligence, what you just said, that's a that's a really important because, you know, when you have the 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 major power brokers in the world, we're talking about the central banking families and mm -hmm. so forth. You know, they speculate. This is how they consolidate power. When you know something's going to happen in advance of it happening, and I'll give you an example. George Soros, yeah. very intelligent guy. Uh, he didn't get to where he is today without being able to speculate. And what better way to speculate and to know the outcome than to actually be have a hand in engineering the outcome? Yeah. I'm not just talking about legis knowing if legislation is going to be passed or regulations that you can make millions or billions. I'm talking about the formulation of countries or economic blocks. This is serious stuff. Absolutely, the big, the biggest lie we've been sold as a. As a, as a civilization for the last hundred years, is there such a thing as free trade? I think mm -hmm. I agree. there's a big fat thumb on the on the scales everywhere. Yes. Quite often it's George Soros's, but if it's not his, it's you know it's David Rockefeller's, sure. and if it's not his, it's someone else's. And, and you in, know, in India, it's Monsanto. Yeah, right. Uh, and they've got a fat thumb on yeah. the uh, food and commodities markets, and yeah. uh, that that's why the country half the country's starving, yeah. the, and that's because of the WTO. And GATT regulations, yeah. so they've had to buy in. The, the the head, the Bilderberg franchise in India has had to buy in to the dictates mm -hmm. of the WTO. And if you look at what Bilderberg is again in this, in the sense of these technocrats and the way they operate, it's they're operating. It's kind of the managerial board of a of a of a of a, of a technocratic class. Uh, of, 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 of a managed, planned economy. Mm -hmm. And you look at how Europe operates, just look at the size of it as, as an entity. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Commission, I'm talking about the European think tanks, the universities, the, the unbelievable size of this thing. In 20-odd different yeah. countries with 20-odd different yeah, languages. Absolutely, and it's, it's about having a planned economy and, and, and about having these technocrats manage things and, and when, you, when you, you often quite often hear people say well look they, they just let them get on with it they're just doing their best to keep the show on the road you know and I guess sort of that's sort of what they're doing but I don't believe that you know Shell and and uh, the head of Barclays and the head of HSBC and the head of Deutsche Bank are all you know planning ex exactly with my, me my best interest is their bottom line yeah I think they have other bottom lines yeah they have other I think they have their own their own set of interests and their own vision of the future mm -hmm. which supersedes the uh, pluralistic or the democratic uh, machinations of us of plebs and serfs. yeah and, and by the way who ca if they were if there were no politicians there and no public officials and probably no military and stuff you know you used to think go and get on with it go and do what you want dance naked for four weeks round of bonfire and then plan the, the, the takeover of the world. But when my Chancellor of the Exchequer is there in an official capacity, he's, he's meant to be representing me, not, not skulking around in secret behind dark windows. Those are quickly, last, we're just going to go quickly to 107. Um, there's just, just to wrap things up for this, uh, this hour, Occupy Bilderberg, okay? Give, give us a shout out. What is Occupy Bilderberg and where is Bilderberg this year? Well, Bilderberg is in uh, Chantilly, Virginia. Uh, and the, End of, end of May, first few days of June, and uh, at the, the Marriott, in the middle of a complex of arms companies, and just up the road from the CIA, and it's uh, Occupy Bilderberg seems to be really taking off, and it's a, it's a, it's a kind of an amazing meeting between the alternative media, the Occupy movement, mm -hmm. and, uh, a, and a kind of an, an aware, protesting, activist community, and I just think it's... A, I kind of got high hopes for it. May, I think it's May going to be 30, amazing. May 31st to June 2nd. Right, something like that. Chantilly, yeah. Virginia. Alex Jones uh, will be there along with a few thousand people, I, I would imagine. I, sort of, I think there is. You know, la the last, before, the, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton both left the campaign trail um, to meet at Chantilly yeah. and left their press corps and everything. That's a brilliant, that footage is online and, and it's very funny. And that was to decide who, which one of them was, uh, yeah. or to, they had an argument or something about who's going to be president. And of course, Obama is the man now. But um, Charlie, I just want to thank you for, for this hour. On the Edge, in association with Uncensored Magazine.